In a previous video, I've introduced you how to transform variables. Computing variables is essentially exactly the same thing, except you can you do more than just transfer a transforming variable in under and over a 50s, let's say, for example, as we did in the previous video. Computing variables can get quite complicated. Gmail has a lot of functions um, that you can use. I'm going to talk you through the two ways of computing a variable and show you some of the basic functionality. So the first one I'm going to show you is using the transform function, actually. So let's say we have age, and what we want to do is we want to tr transform age into a standardized score using Z-scores. Uh, if you don't know what Z-scores is, I will cover that in another video. So we'll select the variable, we click on transform. Um, let's call this age Z-scores. So we know what this variable is, and we're going to create a new transformation here. Now, we're going to label this transformation Z-scores. And we're also going to give it a suffix of Z-scores. So what this does, and this is the advantage of using transform rather than compute, is we can later on, if we have another variable, and we want to standardize that as well, we can go into transform and just select the transformation we've created now and just click that and it does it for you rather than having to go through the next steps I'm going to take. So all I'm going to really do is look at the functions here. Like I said, I mentioned uh, I want to do Z score. So what we're going to do is we can go down to find the Z score function um, and we can click on it. And if you click on it, it tells you as well here what is expected and what it does. So we'll double click on it. And what we're going to have to do is move the bracket after the variable name, closer like that. And as you can see, it's turned it into Z scores. So to demonstrate why transform is nice here is quite some. So let's say here's another A. Uh, this, let's assume this was another variable. And we want to do this, tran uh, also convert this into Z scores. We just click on transform. We select um, Z scores here and it does it for us. So as you can see, it's created another Z score for the same variable. And as well, it's labeled, put the label at the back of it. If you look here, Z scores. The other way of doing something is using the compute function. And this is nice if we want to take a sum, for example, like let's say we want to create another score uh, of two or three different variables and we want to sum them up to see what score has an individual got. Um, we can use the compute function. Again, what we'll do is we'll name it. Um, I'll just name it score for simplicity here. We can find the function, and as you can see, there's lots and lots of different functions. Um, in this particular case, we're looking for the sum function. We can double click on that. And what we're now going to do is we're going to find the variables that we want to sum up. So let me just find these variables. They're quite far down. Uh, violence justified. Yeah. Um, once we select a variable, make sure that you put a comma after them, after this one, add the next one, comma, um, and follow that on. So there should be comma between each of the variables. Um, now what this does is just gives you a score of these three variables added up. Again, what we can do to standardize it, we can standardize it. So what we would do is we would go find the Z scores again and double click and just move the brackets to include all of this as a Z score. And it creates it into, turns it into a Z score. Um, here we go, we've got a variable that before was just the score added up. Now we've standardized the score using Z score and sums. Like I say, the compute can get complicated and you can do an awful lot of things with it, but this will be covered potentially in a later video.